earthquake waves and shadow zones. There are two types of earthquake wave, a P wave or a primary wave and an S wave, the secondary wave. Both types of earthquake wave are created during an earthquake. The P wave is a longitudinal wave. That means that the particles vibrate in the same direction that the wave moves. It's the fastest traveling type of earthquake wave and is always going to arrive at your detector first. P waves can travel through solids and they can travel through liquids. The S wave or secondary wave is a transverse wave. That means it has an S-shaped pattern. And as a result, the particles move perpendicular to or at right angles to the way that the earthquake wave is traveling. So these particles here are moving up and down as the earthquake moves across the screen. It's a slower traveling type of wave and is going to arrive at your detector second. This type of wave can only travel through solids. It's the more destructive type of wave because the vibrations are at right angles to the direction that the wave is traveling. We're going to now look at what a shadow zone is. So marked on this diagram of the Earth is the epicenter of our earthquake. And from there, the two types of earthquake wave are going to be emitted. So the first type of wave that's sent out is the P wave. And the P wave travels through the whole Earth and are picked up by detectors all the way around the Earth. It's going to be detected quite strongly closer to the epicenter, but it will still be detected on other parts of the Earth as well. Um, this is because P waves can travel through solids and they can travel through liquids. So they travel through the, all parts of the Earth. We're now going to look at what happens to S waves. Remember S waves can only travel through solids. S solid S waves travel through solids. Okay. So here we go. There's our S waves, slightly different colour. You'll notice that they only travel through the mantle. This must mean that the mantle is a solid, because S waves can only travel through solids. Therefore, the outer core must be a liquid, as the S waves, when they reach the outer core, are stopped. We have part of the Earth down here called the S wave shadow zone. This is an area of the Earth that will not receive any S waves during an earthquake, because the S waves are blocked by the outer core of the Earth. We can make some conclusions from this about the structure of the Earth. We know that the mantle is going to be a solid. We know the outer core must be a liquid, as the S waves are blocked by it. But we can't make any conclusions about the inner core. The S waves can't get to the inner core because they're blocked by the outer core. Therefore, we don't know, using this technique, whether the inner core is a solid or a liquid. We're now going to think about the path that an earthquake wave takes as it travels through the Earth. Marked on here is the epicenter of the earthquake wave. We're going to look at an S wave, but this holds true for P waves as well. So as the wave is sent out from the epicenter, you'll notice that it doesn't travel in a straight line. So here's our wave. Initially traveling straight, but as it gets deeper into the mantle, it starts to curve and bend away from the core. We're going to think about why that's the case. As the wave travels deeper into the mantle of the Earth, it starts to bend or refract. So the closer it gets to the centre of the Earth, the more it bends away. And the reason why that is, is because as the wave gets deeper, the mantle becomes more dense. Increasing density is going to cause the, what, uh, the earthquake wave to bend and refract away from the core of the Earth. So the deeper the wave gets, the denser the mantle gets, and the more the wave is refracted. The last thing we're going to think about is how we can work out the distance you are away from an earthquake. And it uses a very simple principle. The P wave, the primary wave, travels faster than the secondary wave. So here we have two waves. The blue line is the P wave, the purple is the secondary wave and you'll notice that the P wave arrives first and then the S wave arrives second. As a result we have a time delay and that time difference might be around say 5-10 minutes between the two waves depending on how far away you are. 
the closer you are to the earthquake the smaller that time delay is going to be the further away you are the larger that time delay is going to be so you can use the time delay to work out the distance you are from the epicenter